experiential time is anything but linear. It speeds up, it slows down, it stops. And we've all experienced this, right? You have the long, boring business meeting where you look at your watch after what seems like three hours and 20 minutes has gone by. And the inverse is true, right? A great friend comes in from out of town and you look at your watch after a few drinks and you think 20 minutes has gone by and three hours have gone by. But what made me crazy and fueled my obsession was this notion that time itself was accelerating, that each summer was getting shorter than the last. 98% of adults feel this, 98%. So life isn't just short, it's actively getting shorter. So I have some bad news for you. I've graphed this, I've done the math, and it's way worse than you think. When I made this graph, I was 43 years old, and according to the actual tables of somebody my height and weight, my life expectancy was 86. And I look around the room, there's a variety of ages here, but on average, we're not too far apart, so you're about half done, right? Wrong! There's no such thing as chronological time! We have to have a different axis for this. We have to measure this in a different way, the way we actually experience time. And how the hell do we do that? Well, we talked before that summers an eight-year-old are last forever. Well, I can't plot infinity. So let me instead be conservative and assume that a summer as an eight-year-old starts to feel an awful lot like a year as a 20-year-old. And that starts to feel an awful lot like a decade in middle age. So how to experience the passage of time like an eight-year-old? You have to expand the breadth and depth of your experiences. If you sign up for vocal lessons, sign up to sing in front of 500 people. If you sign up for a triathlon, care about winning. If you, if you go to Toastmasters, sign up to speak at Chicago Ideas Week. Now, how to know if you're doing this right? If you're not willing to cry over the outcomes of your new experience, then you will not slow down time like an eight-year-old. But you're willing to take the risks and emotionally invest, then you will experience summers like you did as a kid. Let's talk about the second law. Thank you. Think for a moment. Is there a day, an incredibly meaningful day, that you would trade away a month of boring days for in order to keep it? Take it to that extreme. Is there a minute, a moment of such scintillating beauty, of such gravity, intensity, and meaning that you would trade away an entire year of routine days for it? Well, what if you could orchestrate and design five of those a year or 10 of those a year? If you could do that, you wouldn't live 43 more years, you would live 430 more years. And there's a man who's done exactly that, and his name was Eugene O'Kelly. Eugene O'Kelly was the CEO of KPMG, and at age 57, Eugene O'Kelly was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer and given 90 days to live. What he did next was amazing. He designed the remaining moments of his life to maximize his time on earth. And here's what he did. He recognized that people and experiences were what mattered most, and he separated all the people he loved into circles, and then he began unwinding them from the outside in to his core family, by saying goodbye in the best way possible. So for the outer circles, peers, mentors, uh, co-workers, he would just have a phone call or walk in the park and he would express his gratitude for everything they'd done for him and then he would say goodbye forever because he would not have time to say goodbye again. And then for the next two inner circles, he recreated the way they first bonded. This is family and friends and extended family. And they would do whatever they did the first time they met or when they really bonded a baseball game or a specific restaurant. And it was right around this time that his experience with time began to morph and he recognized that it was changing and he began to create what he called in his own words, perfect moments where time stopped. And finally, the most intense, his nuclear family and best friends, he had to say goodbye forever to them as well. And for them, he created bucket list experiences, things they would remember long after he was gone. And finally, the hardest part of all, he had to unwind and say goodbye to his 14-year-old daughter forever. And for her, he planned a trip to Prague and then to visit the Inuit. And if you remember anything from today, remember this. Right around 30 days into his last 90 days, Eugene O'Kelly recognized something that has fundamentally changed my life. He realized that he was going to live longer than if he had never gotten cancer at all. I love the, the last two lines in Eugene, Eugene O'Kelly's book. The chapter begins with, I was blessed. I was told I had three months to live. Every man dies. Not every man really lives. I don't know about you, but I want to really live. There's no such thing as chronological time. <laughs>